We're at WTNM and WDVH in Gainesville, Florida. The new owner purchased this facility and found out very quickly they were having downtime and equipment damage. They were losing transmitter equipment. They were losing connectivity equipment, routers, hubs. They were losing lines that came into the facility. It was just one thing after another. Every link in the chain was breaking sooner or later. And I was hired to find out what happened, why it happened, and come up with a solution so it wouldn't happen again. We have two AM radio stations utilizing the same tower. Both those transmitters are solid state. Prior to the bonding work that uh, was performed at that location, we took massive lightning damages to both of the solid state transmitters at $1,400 a piece. Since we've had the bonding done, uh, the occasion of damage has uh, drastically decreased. When we got here, everything was bonded to the building. You can still see the connection points. It was not connected to the earth in any way, shape, or form other than through the building steel, which is inadequate. We changed all of that to give it a code required legal ground and far beyond that. We bring a forot off of a ground bar on the inside out through the building to a ground bonding bar. We created a ground field going around the building all the way to the front and tied to a well, putting rods intermittently driven almost 40 feet on each rod, separated by roughly 40 feet. The well casing is over 150 feet deep and it's four inches and we're exothermically welded to the casing. We have a phenomenal ground. It measures way under one ohm. Here we bond the coaxes and waveguides that are going to the tower with what are called Andrews cuffs. They seize the lightning off of the shield of the coax or the waveguide as it is coming in from the tower and divert it to that ground bar which has double lugs so that the lightning does not go in the facility and damage their equipment. I only use four out stranded cable or larger because I want to have the skin effect function properly because I'm using this to ground in lightning prone areas. If you don't do that, you don't have the surface area. If you use code number six solid, there's not enough surface area. It's inadequate. The conductor should be at least the size of the service. In this case, the service feed on this is four out. So the ground is four out. If the service feed was 750 MCM, the ground would be 750 MCM. That's the way you do it. But the ground that we installed outside and all the bonding we did outside terminates at a copper bonding bar here. That copper bonding bar not only supports the services that come in, it also supports the electrical system and it also supports the flat strap that runs around that connects to the transmission equipment. It also was tied into the main, the distribution panels, and surge protection was installed after we got all the grounding and bonding done. Please understand, first you gotta get the grounding and bonding right. Then you put in a layered level of surge protection so that the main and the first panel loads see the surge first. So we have the largest surge protector, the heaviest one here. Those loads behind it, which are more house type loads, also are surge protection. They're a second layer. The third layer, the last layer, is the most sensitive and critical equipment. Therefore, you have multiple barriers in front of your most critical loads. We also, and this is recommended, this has not been completed, recommend that this last panel, the most critical panel, have an isolated ground bus bar, which would terminate back in the main at the XO bonding point. But it would be pure. It's not case ground. It's an isolated ground wire, typically a green wire with a tracer, either yellow or white and all the sensitive ground pins for all the sensitive equipment would be tied directly to that isolated ground. What we found when we got here is metal racks that were bolted to a concrete floor. Additionally, they were bonded to the electrical system. That's a difference in ground potential. You can't do that. These have to be isolated off the floor. One of the issues that I run into all the time is the way that the telephone company will bond their lightning arresters. The problem that I see, they're using a number six solid. They've got a 90 degree bend here, a second 90 degree, a third 90 degree. It's going down and then it's trying to travel back up. Lightning doesn't work that way. It will flash straight across before it follow that wire. Plus, the wire is not stranded. There's not enough surface area. 
we're dealing with broad spectrum energy. So what we do is we put a small bonding bar down here, we connect their number six to it, and then we run with a large stranded conductor the rest of the way. So we've not messed with their initial connection other than to bond it to a, a proper bounding bar. An AM radio tower is a system of radials and a tower. It's a standalone facility. It does not have electrical circuits. It is not tied to the electrical system in any way. It is an antenna. That's all it is. What we found is the guide wires then the grounding and the bonding that was done to them off of the pylons that are driven into the earth, they, they were less than 8 ohms. So we have three sets of guy wires that are less than 8 ohms. The tower is pretty well grounded effectively. The cost of, uh, that, that was spent on the grounding work that has been performed at this point has been well worth it. Uh, the cost of repairs to the transmitter prior to this far exceeded the cost of what was spent uh, on the work that was done. The two stations here, their uptime has increased dramatically. That's the best part. The equipment damage is a lot less than it was, and as we finish the project, it should be down to almost nothing. It makes me feel good when I see proper grounding. Uh, you get more uh, satisfaction and more confidence in the facility when everything is grounded and bonded like it's supposed to be.